Purush Eshu Mahatmasu Mahapurusha Bhakti Shu Santi Shu Samadarshi Shu. This magnanimous Jitaketa is a dear devotee of the law. He is equal to all in the entities and is free from attachment and hatred. Similarly, I am also very dear to Lord Narayan. Therefore, no one should be astonished to see the activities of the most exalted devotees of Narayan, for they are free from attachment and envy. They are always peaceful and they are equal to everyone. Om Magyantaram Deshyanakirandana Salakya Chaksunyutam Yena Tasmai Sri Buddha De Namaha Mukham Karo Sivacha Lampan Om Lanka Tikrinya Kripa Talaham Vande Sri Purum Dinatayam Namo Om Vishnu Raya Krishna Prasthaya Buddha De Sri Mata Bhakti Vilanda Swami Sinami Namaste Sada Swati Deva Gaur Vande Prachayi Nevishe Shushunya Vahari Pasti Chari Satame Vanja Kalpatu Rupas Cha Kripa Sambhulya Eva Cha Patipana Vanevyo Vaishnavevyo Mahamaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Chantra Sri Advaita Gara Sri Vasti Gaura Vatavanda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Suddenly, he's just, you know, 
fill, you know, fill down into a pool of material desires. How will that happen? Well, that's a potency uh, or the danger of, of becoming envious of life's mass. Yes, this, can be, this, this can be a resource. Or um, one simply loses the connection with Krishna and becomes dry. That also, can also be seen. There are examples of uh, someone who is, has a very envious and critical nature. But see when he goes on, you know, practicing devotional service, he can become, he's very, he follows the regulated principles, he is still chanting 16 rounds, but he becomes dry. He becomes isolated, he becomes lonely, or he just ends up with others of a similar critical mentality, uh, which will be a temporary thing, they will be together as long as they can have a common enemy. Uh, and, and in this way they seem to drag themselves further down. And it doesn't last, you know, it's not based on Krishna in the center, it's based on, on having themselves and their own enemy in the center. So they can become very isolated and lonely individuals. In the Chaitanya Taitamas there's one example of uh, one such individual. There's uh, Ram Chandra Puri. Uh, he, he, was, uh, he was a god brother of Lord Chaitanya's spiritual master and a disciple of Madhavinda Puri. And uh, he actually criticized, can, can just have this song go up and something higher. We don't know that, we don't put take, uh, books on the, on the floor of the respect. Yeah, uh, sorry. sorry. Um, um, yeah, uh, he, Ram Chandra Puri, uh, was a, you know, had this envious mentality. And he uh, is described at, at the last moment of his life, he criticized his spiritual master, uh, his spiritual master, Madhavendra Puri. At that last day, so in his days, he was. Uh, expressing some very deep emotion towards Krishna. He was actually lamenting that I've wasted my life. I have, you know, I, you know, all my life I've wasted it. I didn't engage in Krishna's devotional service and I could not attain Krishna and here I'm, you know, simply, you know, I'm, you know, it's, yeah, I've wasted my life. Where is Krishna? This feeling uh, someone who doesn't know will think this is an expression of, you know, you know that, that actually he did not achieve the, purpose, the goal of his life. Uh, but actually this, this is a very high level of uh, Krishna consciousness where the devotee, the, the pure devotee feels himself completely unqualified. But that's a symptom of a very pure devotee. He thinks that he's himself very fallen, although he is completely pure uh, and he is uh, the most exalted, but you think I'm the most fallen and you think that I did not achieve Krishna, I don't have a drop of love for Krishna, otherwise how could I even be in this body? So he will think like that and then he will lament, but this lamentation is just the other side of ecstasy, another side of being even more intensely associated with Krishna. And uh, because uh, Krishna's presence is uh, even more intense when one is in separation, when one is missing his association, and when one is there. And I don't know if sometimes, you know, someone I experience like that. You, you know, there's someone you very attached to, you love very much, and he or she is not there, and then this missing, you all become mad, and you just, you know. Kind of, he wasn't seeing that person everywhere who was not there. So that's, uh, that's it's very, very intense. And the thing is with Krishna, Krishna is, uh, you know, he is he's absolute. So he is non different from, you know, he, he is present when he is person present. And also in his absence, when one is thinking of him in, in absence, then he's actually present. You know, just the thought of Krishna. Krishna is present in that thought. Um, so it, it is a kind of mystical thing and uh, not to be understood by ordinary people, just like Prabhupada quotes this 
lying here by Snobiya Kriya Hutu Vikina Hujaya, that an ordinary man cannot understand the activities and you know and the moods of a actual Vaishnava. They admit they are a mystery for a common man. So uh, therefore one one sees an advanced vice. Once you, I mean, once you not uh, judge or like that, once you like to just be respectful and pray for his mercy, but uh, understand that one doesn't understand the vice not necessarily. That's like that's the actual situation. So Ram Chandra Puri, he, uh, he, uh, you know, he, he's not did not understand his spiritual master, and he actually. When he saw that, then he thought, oh, my spiritual master, he's, uh, he's actually not Krishna conscious. So he started instructing him, uh, which is also a great offense. You don't instruct your spiritual master, you don't instruct your superiors. But he did. And he said, uh, why are you lamenting? You are actually a great, you know, you should be self-realized now. Uh, you should not, um, you, know, you shouldn't lament, you shouldn't anger, you should simply uh, be absorbed in Brahman at this point. Uh, so he, that was how he was criticizing him. And Madhavendra Puri at this point, he was, then he lamented even further, uh, says, you know, I've wasted my life, I could not attain Krishna. Now I have had this idiot coming here instructing me about Brahman. You know, that's even <laughs> adding what an insult to injure me, but I think that's even special. It's already bad enough that I couldn't achieve Krishna. Now this idiot is here. I guess he is telling me about Brahman, I should meditate about Brahman. And then he cursed him, get out from here, you know, if I die seeing your face, I'll never attain Krishna. So he just he was just thrown out Ram Chandra from there. And as a result, he uh, just began, you know, because he didn't, you know, that's also the nature of someone who is uh, envious like that. You know, they, they don't see, you know, someone, I mean, uh, all of us in this material world have a little, you know, we, we have a little, some envy. But at least if we still have some sanity left, we will understand that I did something wrong. And my understanding was, you know, but there are those kind of, you know, it doesn't matter what, what happens, they simply, they're so uh, encapsulated in their own mind and their own world uh, where they are, you know, where their understanding is perfect, uh, they're perfect, they cannot, and, and no instruction can penetrate through that. And no, nothing in the, in, in fact, it seems like it's, it must be a kind of madness because even, you know, even if the whole world explodes around them and the whole existence collapses, don't get the point. Don't get the point. I don't know. I've seen it. I'm not going to mention examples, but I've seen it. And they're still walking around on this planet somehow. <laughs> and I'm probably one of them. That's why I can see them. And, uh, but Brahm Chandra you know, he, you know, he actually became he didn't, some, he didn't fall from his, uh, as I've described, he continued being a very strict sannyasi, uh, but uh, completely became dry and lost the essence of what sannyasi is all about. He became absorbed in the externals. Regulated principles are actually externals. They're very important to follow the regulated principles and so on, but they are nevertheless externals, they're not the essence. But he, you know, that's, he became absorbed in externals. Uh, Rinse Rue, he, he has actually, he, he wrote also some many years ago, he actually gave a seminar on, uh, on uh, he gave it a fancy name. Rinse Rube is, an, you know, he's a professor, so he uses fancy name, something, something pathology, was it psychopathology or something like that? But psyche, this, this, it means the soul, and pathology means disease. So he's talk, talking about uh, similar on diseases of the soul. In other words, different kind of diseases, you know, spiritual diseases one can have in devotional service. And uh, there he, he, he talked about that one symptom that one is in a somewhat diseased condition is that one gets one, 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 one's focus between essentials and details becomes shifted. 
there is the essentials and there, you know, and, and, and the principles are there to support the essentials. Sometimes even uh, for the sake of the essential, the principle is sacrificed every so often. I think you had one the other day, wasn't it? Uh, someone on the box of tacos, appearance they came and said, you know, why did you, you know, you, you were, you were, you know, we're supposed to fast, uh, we are, you know, in, but then you were eating on, you know, on the, you know, taking Prasad before 12 o'clock, you know, we are breaking the principle. I think you told him that, that because I, I want to go out and distribute books for Bhakti and Taco, and I, if I don't take in Prasad now a week, I cannot go out, or something like that. So, uh, so that's, so that's a principle, but, you know, that's a simple example of essentials and, and, and details. It's a detail we should fast for the bit, for the sake of pleasing Bhakti or Thakur. But Bhakti Thakur is so, you know, essential, the essence, essence of Bhakti Thakur is to go out and distribute Krishna consciousness. And if you need to take Prasad to do that, then that should be done. The, the details should be sacrificed. There's even uh, one, uh, Bhakti Saraswati, he had some, also some disciples who came from a some, as I understand, it was a brahminical background, and uh, it was a kadeshi, so we fast from grains and beans and kadeshi. And they, uh, and Bhagavan Saraswati said, it has been told me, everyone go out and distribute books and magazines, and preach. And they were back, and then uh, they, 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 they're back in the ashram, and then Bhagavan Saraswati came and asked him, why are you here? Because it's a courtesy, we are fasting, we are too weak to, uh, to go out. And then told, told him, you know, uh, they were actually they were, they were having something else in the courtesy, but they came from a different background, from a different culture. In, in India, in the region you come from, people are very much attached to the particular region they come from and the food they have there. So in Bengal, for example, they eat rice, and if the courtesy don't get their rice, they simply, you know, they disintegrate. <laughs> but in the, in, the, in in more central India, like northern India, like mature area, rice is not such a stable food. But roti is a is a is a part of it. You know, the roti is uh, So, but garlics, if they don't get their rice and their mustard oil, you know, they simply they, they cannot find. Therefore, there was. Uh, one devotee is described in the Chaitanya Charitamrita Subhuti Roy. He would uh, uh, collect little money. He was, he was a beggar and he was collecting firewood and selling that. So he was actually a very poor man, living as a poor man. But he would still put aside whatever he could. And whenever there was a, a, a Bengali devotee came, then he would uh, make sure he would go and buy rice and mustard oil for that Bengali. So he was comfortable this way, he was rendering service to the vice lords. Because he knew that they, you know, they, you know, they, they, kept, they wouldn't, they wouldn't be able to function, they wouldn't be able to digest the food in the in, in mature area. <laughs> so there was a, something similar to these disciples of Bhagavan Saraswati. So uh, that they, they couldn't, you know, they couldn't just eat what was supposed to be the ashram. And then Bhagavan Saraswati told his cook, make some kitri for these brahmacharis so they can go out. It's a kadiji, you know, how can you break uh, a kadiji, like great things? But Bhagavan Sattarasana's point was that the essential is to go out. So if you have to break a detail, you know, a kitri on a kadiji, you, you, you do it. So, but that, that, that can be a symptom of, of someone, you know, when one is in a diseased condition, one gets, gets hung up on it. You know, so you know, you must fast like that. You must chant, you know, 64 rounds a day. It said, like, you know, but of course, also say that when you preach, you don't have to chant 64 rounds in any way. Who can chant 64 rounds? Uh, it, most of us would be, you know, completely the, the doors of Krishna consciousness would be locked. Um, Prabhupada said 16 rounds a day without fail, um, and then engage in service. As much as and then one is, he guarantees we go back home, back to Godhead. So, 
but uh, so someone can become, you know, when once when one is in a severe disease condition, one gets hung up on a, a detail, and especially one uses it to uh, pass judgments on others, like Ram Chandapuri did. He was, uh, you know, he would he would uh, feed, he would invite sannyasins to come and eat. He would feed them, and he would even force them to eat more. Uh, and because he was an older sannyasi, then they would kind of feel obliged to just eat more, even though they didn't want to eat more. But he would say, "No, no, take more, take more." And then afterwards, when they were finished, then he would start criticizing and say, "You eat too much. You know, you cannot. <laughs> you know, how can you maintain your uh, sannyas principles when you when you're eating so much? You know, and how much money do you have anyway?" Since you're eating so much, you must be hiding some money. Some yes, it's not supposed to keep money anyway, but you must be hiding some money, otherwise, you couldn't afford to eat so much. And you know, just <laughs> uh, fancy. Tadanta Tamasa talks about Ramchandra Puri's fanciful accusations against Lord Chaitanya. He also did a lot of Chaitanya. Lord Chaitanya was accepted very humbly, didn't, you know, he didn't become angry or anything like that. Um, but he, but he's, he's given us an example of someone you know, who, due to envy, became completely dry and became absorbed in secondary principles uh, in, at the sacrifice of the essential principles. So that's, uh, yeah. Uh, so that, anyway, that was, you know, that's a danger of Vaisnava Parats. Uh, I being on this because Daksha was one example. But actually, here we hear, you're hearing about uh, the opposite example. This is uh, about Chita Keto Maharaj. And he, uh, he's, he, he also criticized Lord Shiva. But here the mood was completely different, different because it was not malicious. It was, uh, it was just an exchange you have between friends. And it's a, it's a normal thing between friends. You know, in friendship, you can criticize each other for fun. You know, you, you, you pull the leg of each other, and it's a, you know, this expression. Pull the leg of your know, friend, like you, know, you poke to them, make jokes at their expense, and like that. Even Krishna and Arjuna, Arjuna was even making jokes on the expense of Krishna. Uh, he, you know, he, he was. Uh, so he talks about that in the Bhagavad Gita, and Juna says, sorry, you know, when he says, oh, see a universal form, and suddenly the mood of friendship became diminished. And then Arjuna became fearful and said, sorry, sorry, you know, I've been, you know, I've been treating you as my friend. Uh, we were lying on the same bed. Sometimes we were together with friends, sometimes we were alone, laughing, joking, and I was minimizing your position, because that's what one does as, as, as you know, when you're friends, you minimize your position, but it's, 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 there's no offense thing, it's, it's just in joking mood. And Lord Shiva is pointing out here, you know, like this whole exchange was in a joking mood. Uh, Chitaketa Maharaj was there flying around with a lot of beautiful women, and he was enjoying the association with the women, and then he sees Lord Shiva, they're good friends, and then he laughs at Lord Shiva, just see you just attached to your wife. And then Lord Shiva, <laughs> Uh, he, <clears throat> he didn't say so, but you know, he was thinking, you know, he understood Chita Keto, so they were exchanging, you know, glances of jokes. And it's, you know, it's, it's kind of, you know, uh, well, she was laughing and said, yes, I, and they, he understood the joke, uh, and, and, and it's, uh, it was obvious, and it was just, it was just fun. But Parvati did not understand that, she took it seriously, and therefore, she cursed Chita Keto, and this is what this whole uh, pastime is about, how Chita Keto was mistakenly cursed by Parvati, and how he took it, you know, and that, that, that was actually, ultimately it was not a mistake, because this is how Chita Keto was glorified, he was actually 